Greetings. Now that we're into the new year, back on some kind of a schedule, I thought I would continue my series um, going through the Wildwood Tarot uh, deck with you and um, do the, the weekly readings, the little weekly uh, three card, I'll, we'll call them readings, <laughs> three card readings. Um, every week, I would, every weekend, I was going to be pulling three cards and um, from the Wildwood Tarot and uh, try to look, I was looking for actually differences between the Wildwood Tarot and the Red Weight um, system that I'm used to reading to see what the, where the differences might lie. The emphasis might be in a different place. You know, if every deck had its emphasis in the same exact place, we would only need one deck. So that's sort of the, that's the beauty of having multiple decks. And I'm starting to, be, I'm starting to see that. I'm starting to come out of my, you know, an old woman set in her ways, only did the same deck all the time. I'm starting to see the advantages in having multiple decks. And certainly this Wildwood Tarot has just taken my heart. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I, I got a little excited about it actually last weekend and I actually started last weekend and I did do three cards and like I said I would and I journaled on them a little bit but I did not do the video on those cards and I did not do my little write up on Bird and the Crone website so I'm going to do one video on that today and then right after that video I'll shoot a second video and do this week's cards so I'm going to catch up two weeks in one so you're going to see the same me <laughs> two weeks in one okay um I also want to say that, yeah, I do have some notes. I've been, I take a little bit of notes um, before I talk to you about these cards because I want to try to, you know, I'm looking at what the author of the deck had in mind and comparing that to what I, some of the, the journaling that I've done on my own, on my, on my, um, uh, Hoi Poloi deck, on my Rider Waite system, you know, some of the cards. I'm comparing some of the notes I've taken on both. So I might be referring back to my notes here because I want to be as clear as I can maybe be about each of these readings. Um, remember, um, I'm just giving you an example of what you may see in the cards. Differences you may see in the cards. You might get different results. You might have different results. And if you do, I'd love to hear. Okay, not to make this long. I want to get right to it. So remember, this is last weekend. This was taken uh, actually last Friday, the 12th of January, is when I came back into this. So I'm going to call that, I guess that's week four in the series. And the three cards that I drew were our first card is the Eight of Vessels. I hope you can see. I, I changed the light in here a little bit. Eight of Vessels. Um, it's called Empowerment. No, it's not. It's called Rebirth. Pardon me. It's called Rebirth. And we see here, um, I don't know if you can see, but there's three little dishes of water in the branches flowing into this cauldron, which in terms, of, as it overflows, flows into the four vessels below, which as they overflow, they flow into the stream and continue on. Okay. So we have that. The second card that I pulled was the Queen of Arrows, also known as the Swan. And the Queen of Arrows, remember, corresponds with the Queen of Swords in the Rider Deck and the Rider Weight system. And in my Hoi Polloi, in my Hoi Polloi deck. Okay. We see a swan uh, swimming through the alone, just alone, swimming through the the river there whatever um through the rush through through the rush okay two two cards of uh water kind of interesting for me and lastly is the page of stones which is the page of pentacles in the right away and it is called the lynx and here we see an, an actual lynx a, an animal a cat up in a tree high up in a tree Okay, now we'll compare the, the decks in a minute. Okay, but first of all, I want to say my first impression right away 
Um, oh, this is what I love about this deck. My first, first impression of these is what the artist, the artistry in these decks is. This, in this deck, is just it 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 glides my heart. Really, it's so I get lost in some of the images, and I have to say, you know. That's one of the big differences, you know, one of the big differences, it's just a richer, I feel like I'm getting a richer, a little bit of a richer experience than perhaps I got through the Rider Waite. Now, I don't want to say, I don't want to talk like that because the Rider Waite, oh my, if we didn't have that, those cards are so, they're so rich themselves. They're such a, they're rich in so many things. Um, pardon me, I have the window open. You might wonder why I'm here bundled up and I have my window open. It's because it's a beautiful day here. Uh, it's just beautiful, but it's cold. You know, the air is cold. It's, I don't know, uh, maybe it's in the maybe low 60s or, I don't know. But it, it's, uh, my house, inside my house is so cold. It's warmer outside than in. But the air with the, with the chill might even be in the 50s. I don't know. It's, it's very unusual to have a very bright, sunny, sunny day like this and have it so cold. I'm trying to warm up my room by letting this air in. But that between my that and my tea, I'm a little bit, you know. This is our blustery winter day. <laughs> so anyway, back to the cards. Um, the, okay, first of all, we can see a big difference. I was saying that the the um, images that I'm seeing in the cards just are giving me such. They're already you can feel a difference. Let me say, feel a difference. You're familiar with the Eight of Cups and the Rider right Waite. This is, of course, the Hoi Polloi, which is why maybe the colors are a little different. But here we have the Eight of Cups. And this is a man turning his back on his Eight Cups, which are there in line, apparently representing everything that he has made, everything he has, whatever left behind him. He's turning his back. He's walking away. And he's walking away towards we don't know what. We see only the mountains in the in the uh, in the background is where he's going towards the mountains. He's following the water, following the water. We have that in common. So it's some kind of emotional, whatever he's left behind. He's emotionally um, tied to in some way, probably um, some kind of uh, experiences, some kind of emotional experiences. No, stay down, Louis. Sorry, let's sit down. Good boy. Um, anyway, very stark image. I always, it's a sad feeling, right? He's turning his back. He's leaving everything that he's accomplished. He's letting it all go. And he's going out to try to find something else to fill him up. Because this is not doing it for him, right? It's a feeling of sadness and maybe regret. I'm sorry, excuse me. Louie, you can't lay there. Come on, lay here. He's trying to get up on the bed here, and I've got <laughs> I have my knitting up there. I don't want him to just lay down. Good boy. Okay. Um, anyway, this is a feeling of sadness. What do I see when I look at the Eight of Vessels? And, of course, your clue is it's rebirth. It's called rebirth. Okay. This is a, it's a, it's a supposed to be a joyful card. It's a joyful card. Um According to the author, it's it, he says rejoice. It's a time of renewal and it's potential. Your potential is here. A time to this is yes, a time for something new. So this this you could you could argue is positive, but doesn't this feel better? And the other thing that I see different in this is this is is showing us how the water, all the water, is collected and running together and coming together in this cauldron. And then as it overflows, it's going into the water that's leading it somewhere new, right? It's like everything that we have done in the past, everything that we have done in the past, every mistake that we have made is a lesson that we, something, a lesson that we learned that will help us wherever we are going in the future, okay? This only speaks of he's finished with whatever happened in the past. This card speaks of reflecting on what's happening in the past and and seeing the great potential seeing the great potential um, the wisdom that you have gained from mistakes you've made in the past 
So this is really a lovely sentiment. I really like this card a lot. Okay, the second card that I pulled was the Queen of Arrows, again, with the swan. Here he is, the swan. Okay, let's compare that for a minute to the Queen of Swords, which is the Rider Waite equivalent, and here in my Hoi Polloi. We see the Queen of Swords sitting. She's in the clouds. Here she's sitting in the clouds. She's sitting up above. She's above, right? Sit up above something. And she's holding her, her sword straight up. And she has her hand gesturing out. Okay. She has something to say. She needs to see. She appears to be in judgment. She appears to be... Um, in some way, sending herself above whatever is below. Setting herself in judgment. And the Queen of Swords, we know, has the ability to judge um, impartially. She doesn't have a lot of emotion or sentimentality when she needs to make a... Uh, when she's looking at something um, that has gotten her attention, some attention, some thing she, some cons some consideration, some thought. Separating her emotions, her head from her heart, head from her heart, that's what we say about. Someone very much is able to do that. It's either someone who's very much able to do that, or it is somebody warning that maybe you should be able to separate yourself. If you want to make a good judgment, if you want to be clear in thinking, you need to, and stay clear to the task at hand, you might need to separate your emotions, right? That's what we say. The Queen of Arrows, in contrast, we're talking about a swan. And a swan is, um, here swimming, we see the swan very uh, swimming serenely through the reeds. Um, swans are associated um, sometimes with purity, sometimes with mourning, so there might be sadness. Some some emotional thing. Uh, she may be separating herself from some kind of an emotional thing, just like the Queen of Swords here is rising above whatever the emotion was, rising above it all. Um, so, and we see the swan maybe perhaps doing the same thing. But, again, we see a little bit of hope. Well, there's some little primroses here blooming down here in the corner, which are supposed to indicate that there's a little bit of hope. Remember, we always look for those little tiny uh, details in all of the carol cards because there's there's a reason they're in there. They're not just pretty little flowers, but there's a reason every image really is in every um, artistic and interpretation of each tarot card, no matter what the deck. There's a reason that the item is there, so don't, don't overlook. Don't overlook all those little things. So that also gives you maybe some kind of um, hope or some kind of healing, indicating that maybe there was a separation and that this, the um, this, this swan maybe indicates that there was kind of a separation, some kind of sadness brought about by a separation of sorts, perhaps. But we're taught in through, the, through the author here that the uh, swan is perfectly capable on her own, can be very capable on her own, just like the Queen of Swords in the Rider deck, Rider Waite deck. Very, very capable person. Um, but she enjoys this. The swan does enjoy groups. And if you've ever seen swans in the wild, and the, they do, you usually see them. They're very loyal. Um, they're very loyal animals. Um, and they do like to be with other with others of their species. Um, I love seeing them swimming, the mother swimming around with all the babies on her back. That's lovely. Um, and as, apparently they do mate for life. I think they mate for life. They have one mate. <laughs> um, so they do enjoy to be with other people, other swan people. <laughs> but um, they also can be snippy. You know, it's, a lot of people, swans are like geese. They can be very uh, sharp. They can be very fierce protectors. Okay, so... Um, so just like the Queen of Swords can be very, sometimes we, we say the Queen of Swords is very, uh, mm, cold, almost cold. Um, the, the swan is capable of that kind of, uh, biting emotion too, too. But, um, 
the thing, the different feeling that I'm getting here is this one is moving towards. This one is swimming towards something. Where this queen of swords is rising above, standing above, keeping above something. Okay. So I see that a little bit, that one, another one little difference. Okay. So pretty much the same kind of, uh, same kind of sentiment, but a little, do you see a little, do you see the little bit of difference in it? Now, the, the point of bringing up all these differences is, it's possible, like it, I say, if you have, if I get a new deck, like I got this new Wildwood Tarot, and it has the same basis as the Rider Waite, in other words, it has the same, you know, the suits that correspond, like the vessels are, it correspond to the cups, the swords, the arrows, you know, likewise, the stones, the pentacles. So it has that. It also even has the same page, knight, queen, king hierarchy in the court cards, which sometimes that can get confusing because sometimes those are, in some decks, they're reversed or they have, instead of a page and a knight, they have, oh, they have different things. You know, they're called different things. But as long as the, the decks seem to go in the same, follow the same uh, organizational pattern, it's possible for me to take what I know about Rider Waite and just look at the cards and think about the correspondence in my head and think, well, this is really, you know, this is really like the, this is like really like the Four of, uh, four of Cups. Oh, I know all about the Four of Cups, right? I know somebody just really wants to have a change. Somebody's, you know... Somebody's ready for change. And I can put that in, I mean, you know, somebody's restless or whatever. Okay? Restless. And whatever. Whatever the deck. And I could try to make that work in my new deck, in my new Wild Wood Hero. Yes, that would work. But you see how we're missing the richness? We're seeing what the difference in the de in the decks. Why would we look at a new deck? This is a whole new adventure. This is a whole new level of thinking and here's another one that is very they're very good my third card here the page of page of stones the lynx card we see the lynx and i want to show you first the page of pentacles you're familiar with and the rider weight and the hoi polloi coloring here i have okay and um the page of pentacles we see him he's very focused on his uh he's very very focused on what it is he wants he has very clear plans. He has some action. He has things. He knows what he wants to achieve. He, 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 or he wants, you know, see his focus. He's not gazing anywhere in the surroundings. He's gazing right into, into this pentacle. Right into that pentacle. Um, he has a very strong desire to manifest something. Okay. But sometimes... Your plans and your desires do not line up with your skill set. <laughs> Sometimes you really don't have what it takes to manifest your, your, your dreams and your goals. Okay? Sometimes you have a plan set. You cannot, it's not good enough just to have that, oh, I want to have the desire to do it. You also have to have the skills. You have to have the skills. And in this card, um... We don't see that. We don't see that in this card. We don't see... There's nothing on the card to indicate um, any of that. Um, of course, we know the the uh, page card is a young... It's a young person or just the start of uh, some new endeavor. He's just at the very beginning of it. But you know he's not going to ever succeed if he doesn't have the skills. Okay. So the success, the success it will have in whatever his new endeavor in is going to really depend on what skills are in place to achieve these goals. And the more skills he has, the better are the chances of, of acquiring these dreams, right? Acquiring what he wants to get. Okay, now the Lynx card. The Lynx card in the Wildwood Herald, on the other hand, 
the lynx, first of all, an animal is very fast. He's a very good hunter. He's fast. He's clever. He's, you know, just like any cat in the wild. But in the but also he's a good climber. He can go up in trees. Um, and also his, his ability to blend in. He can hide up there in the trees and his prey below won't see him. Okay. So that is a, that's a really positive thing if you're going to be a hunter, right? If you're going after something, um, that's, that's really good. He has, he's a fierce hunter, but, um, there's a possibility if you're, if you're, if we're talking about achieving your goals, if you're too good at blending into the background, if you're too good at blending into the background, are you going to be recognized? Are your goals going to be, are your accomplishments going to be recognized? That's maybe a, that's maybe a, um, a caution with the card. Remember, I've said in the past that every card really has both positive and negative in it. Every, every negative, apparently, first appearing card that appears very negative, there's always hope of some kind showing in that card. In the same instance, when it is a positive card, a very strong positive card, is a strong, Louis, please. <laughs> it's a strong positive card. What is, what is the caution? What is the caution? And here is the caution. You don't want to blend in too well. If you're really going to succeed, you want people to recognize your success, right? It's easy to be overlooked. It's easy to be overlooked, particularly if you're so focusing in on this. If you're so focusing in on what you want, and you're not paying attention to the people around you. You're not tend to paying attention to how people are reacting, okay? or not paying attention to everything in your physical world which this lynx is doing. From up here, he's, he can see everything, right? He can see everything around him. This person would be able to. <laughs> he looks like he's high up. I see a mountain in the distance, like down, but he looks like there's some water here beside him and he's like sort of on the edge of the land here. So, and it's pretty flat there, so it looks like he can see a big different distance if he tries, but he's very, very focused in on his goals. Okay. Do you see the difference at all in these two sets of cards? I really, I hope you are. I hope you're seeing some kind of differences. I hope it's something to you. Anyway, something to think about. I'm going to give it some final thought. And write up my, uh, I'll write up a little blurb. And I'll post the link. When I put the video up, I will try to remember to post the link. If not, you'll be able to get to the video from, for sure. I always post the video link when I put my little blurb up in my, on my, um, on my blog page for the crone.com but uh anyway i hope it's helpful i like to know your reactions if you have any experiences with any of these cards of the wild wood tarot i love to hear your reactions okay so i'm going to break and then i'm going to come back in the next video with this week's cards okay so anyway thank you for watching i am rebecca the good wife and i wish you blessings